Alrighty, everybody. Now, the video you're watching is still, uh, key, the lesson you're watching is Key Signatures and Chord Progressions, Part 2. I've had to split this lesson up because it's a little bit longer than I thought it would be. So, let's go back to my original question. What if we wanted to have the same song, the same chord progression, the same internal bones, but we wanted to play it in a higher key with a different outer skin? Right? What if we wanted to take that wood, that chair, and we wanted to make a new chair out of this? We want to make that same chair out of slightly different materials in a, in a slightly different way. Okay. Now uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna try an old Johnny Cash tune. Right. First, I'm gonna play it in the key of G. All right. Now this is important. Okay. And I'm just gonna make this point to you really quick. Now. Watch. I'm going to go from the first chord, which is uh, in the key of G, is the number is the G, right? G is our first chord. Okay. Uh, we're going to go from the first chord to the fourth chord, which is our C, and then back to our first chord, and then back to our fourth chord again. And he does that twice, right? You know, bound by wild desire. This is the Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash, by the way, right? And so he doesn't go to the fifth chord, the D chord, until the chorus. I fell into a burning ring of fire, right? So you'll see, you'll see it when we get to it, all right? Now, if you'll just give me two moments, okay. So you'll see what I'm talking about once we get to it. Are you ready? Now we're going to start in the key of G, okay? Because we're in the key of G and we're starting on our G note, right? Love is a burning thing And it makes a fiery ring Bound by wild desire First chord to the fourth chord to the first chord Now we're going to go to the fifth chord, D So that's our musical distance, right? Fifth chord, fifth chord, fifth chord, to the fourth chord, to the first chord, right? And so that's what he plays this song. So that's the song in the key of G, right? Now notice that we stayed, if you'll just give me a moment, notice that we stayed within uh, that classic one, four, five chord progression. We went from, we had a G, we had our C, and we had our D in there, right? I fell into a burning to the fourth, to the first chord, right? And so that's what we had in this song, okay? Now, this is a common thing for people to do who think that a song is too low in the key of G. All they'll do is they'll simply bring the, the key signature up to the key of A. Okay, so now we are thinking in terms of the key of A, right? Um, now we're going to change, all we're doing is we're changing the key signature, okay? But the bones of the song, the internal structure is the same. Only the outer skin has changed, all right? And the distances between the first chord and the fourth chord and the fifth chord are still the same, okay? They're the, still the same amount of notes. And I'll say that again, right? The musical distance between two chords in any key signature never changes. The, the, the distance between between the first chord and the fourth chord and the fifth chord never changes, okay? The distance between an A chord and the D chord is the same thing as the distance between the G chord and the C chord, all right? As you can see from here, and you're gonna hear it as we play it, right? So now that we've moved our number strip up one key, we have A as the first, we have D as the fourth, and now we have the E as the, uh, as the fifth, okay? D is the fourth chord, and E is the fifth chord in the key of A, all right? And now remember, like I said, the distance between the G chord and the C chord, the first and the fourth of the key of G, is the same thing as the distance between the A and the D, all right? The first chord and the fourth chord of the key of, of A, right? And we can see that, right? The distance does not change, okay? G... A, B, sorry, I'll just 
show you a quick example of what I mean, okay? G is the first in the key of G, G, A, B, C, right? That's four, okay? Now we're gonna go to our A. Now we're thinking in terms of the A chord, A, B, C, D. The distance is the same, it never changes, all right? So now we're gonna try that Johnny Cash tune again, except this time we're going to play it in the key of A instead of the key of G, all right? Now notice that it's the same song, the same bones, the same distances between the chords, okay? The only difference is the individual chords are slightly higher. They've gone up a little bit, right? Now we can see that, okay? Uh, we're gonna keep the bones, but we're gonna change the song. Uh, we're gonna change the skin, okay? Um, right. <clears throat> Love is a burning thing. And it makes a fiery ring Bound to the fourth chord, to the first chord, right? I fell into a ring of fire Now to the fifth chord, E I fell into a fourth chord, to the first chord I went fifth chord, fifth chord down to the fourth chord, to the first chord, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire, the ring of fire. Okay, so now we're playing the same song as we just did. The same song with the same bones. And the distances between the first, the fourth, and the fifth in the in the in this version is the same as it was for the G, right? Fifth chord, fifth chord, fifth chord. In the dark and dire, I went down, down, down into the fourth, fourth chord to the first chord, right? And so that's the important uh, point I'm trying to make. Do you see what just happened? Uh, we just made that same old chair. Uh, out of uh, different materials, out of different notes, but it's still the same chair, still the same bones of the song, you know? Um, still, you know, the, the chord progression uh, has remained the same. The chord progression and the bones are still the same, except all we've changed is the outer skin, the key signature of the song. So that's how easy it is with music, folks. If you know the kinks and the tricks to it, it's really that simple, okay? So now that I've given us this idea of the difference between a chord progression, which is like the bones of a song, and the ever-changing key signature, which is like the outer skin of the song, um, we can show a few examples to really drive this point home. And I think that this diagram is the best uh, friend we have for proving that point. Now, I've just shown you one common key signature change, okay? Uh, bringing a song up from the key of G to the key of A, right? So that it sounds higher, okay? Now, just as in the key of C, or sorry, excuse me, just as in the key of G, where the G, uh, the G is the first, the C is the fourth, and D is our fifth, okay? In the key of A, every single chord in the key has a special place uh, that Every single chord has a special place in the key, right? So now A is the first, D is the fourth, and E is now the fifth. And the distances between the, the, the first and the fourth never changes, okay? And the distance between the first and the fifth never changes, all right? Only the sound changes, that's all. It's the distance between the chords that gives them their real character and color, not just the chords themselves. Okay, so if you've been following this lesson so far, I have to congratulate you because you've just learned one of the biggest secrets of music that there is, okay? Um, now, uh, I know it's probably not, I, I know it's going to take one or two more watch throughs to really absorb this rather strange concept of uh, chord progressions and changing key signatures, but trust me, it'll be worth it because this is probably one of the most revealing and edifying musical lessons that you're likely to learn, okay? Uh, don't be surprised and don't be discouraged at all if none of this stuff sticks, okay? To be honest with you, I'd be more surprised if it did stick, all right? Because we're dealing with very confusing stuff right now. So just try sticking with me for a few more examples, and I'm sure, especially by the time we come to the end of these introductory lessons, and we're starting to play the songs at the end of the lessons, 
this stuff's going to start to stick, and you're going to start to really fly with all these new concepts that we've just learned, okay? And besides, if you, you know, if you feel like you didn't really absorb the lesson, just good old YouTube, you can always rewind it, you know, come on back and settle in for one more headache for the road. Um, the info is all here, folks. It's all a matter of patience and determination and endurance from this point on, okay? So uh, let's be patient and endure, and I can assure you, my friends, it's all going to get easier from here, okay? Now, uh, on to our next example. Now, we're going to play for this song. We're going to start in the key of E, which means that we have to transpose. Well, we're not going to transpose yet, but... This song is played in the key of E, okay? Um, and what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to transpose it from the key of E to the key of G, all right? So let's look at our key of E for now, okay? Um, uh, now, just like we did for Amazing Grace, as I said, we're going to transpose from the key of E to the key of G, right? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the skin but we're going to keep the bones. We're going to change the skin, but we're going to keep the bones of the song. The bones are going to be the same. Uh, we're going to make um, we're going to make the same old chair out of new materials. Okay, and this is our chair that we're going to play. We're going to use an old blue rodeo song that, like I said, it starts in the key of E. We're thinking in key in the uh, key of E major now. So now the first of the key of E is E, obviously. The fourth of the key of E, the A is now the fourth, all right? The key of E is, uh, the E is the first, A is the fourth chord in the key of E, and B is the fifth chord in the key of E, okay? We can see we've got our first E, we've got our fourth A, and then we've got our fifth, the B. And those are the only three chords that we're going to be using in this song. Now the song, which is called Till I Gain Control Again, uh, as I said, we start on our A, and then, or I'm sorry, excuse me, we start on our E chord, just like the sun, and then uh, it goes to the B on that part, right? It's going to start off right away, just like the sun over the mountain top. So it's going to go from the E, the first, to the B, the fifth, to the E right away. And then it's going to go to the A right after that. You know, I'll always come again, back to our E, right? And then it goes back to the A. No matter what C I've been, back to our E, sailing on, and then to the fifth. I'll always come back home again, back to the E again, okay? And so that is what we're doing for this song. Anyway, you'll see that once we actually play the chords for the song, right? Okay, and now we're actually going to play it through. Okay, are you ready? <clears throat> Now, we're starting on our first chord, which is the E in the key of E, okay? Just like the sun over the mountain tops. A, fourth chord. You'll always come back home again. Fourth chord. No matter what sea I've been. First chord. Sailing on to the fifth chord. I'll always come back home again, back to the first chord again, right? And so that is the song in the key of E, okay? So we ended on our first chord, and, uh, just like we started on our first chord, right? Which is common uh, to do uh, in any song. It's common to start and end on the first chord, the root chord of the key signature, okay? And so now we've just played that song in the key of E. So what do we do when we want to bring a key up, uh, the key of a song up to a higher key signature? Well, all we do is we just move it all up, right? We're gonna make this a higher key, all right? So now our, our uh, our key signature, the G, is the first note, which means that we're in the key of G now. I'm just going to move these over here, if you don't mind. Okay. So now G is our first, as we've seen before. C is now our fourth. And D is now our fifth chords, okay? And so now we're going to play the same exact song through, except now we're in a different key signature, right? Starts off in the, in the G chord, the first chord. Just like the sun 
to the D chord over the mountain top, right? And then after that, we're going to go to our fourth chord again, C. For what you see is what I am. Back to our G chord, okay? And now this is going to be the same bones of the song. The, so the bones of the song are going to be the same. It's going to be the same chair made in a different material, out of different higher notes, a thinner skin, right? As we've seen before, okay? So, here we go. We're going to change our song into the key of G, all right? Now we're going to play that same song again uh, in a higher key, okay? And it starts off in our first chord, just like it did last time. Just like the sun over the mountain tops No, I'll always come again Sorry, it's a little high. <laughs> Sorry. No matter what sea I've been saved So now we ended that on the key of G, okay? Now that's a little high for me. I, I'm used to playing this with my Aunt Cindy, and she's got a high, a high country voice. And so I'll play this song in the key of E, because it's lower for me. But when I go and play this song with my Aunt Cindy, she will play it in the key of G, and I'll let her sing it, because her voice is naturally accustomed to a higher register. That's the beauty of music, you know what I mean? It, it, it fits into whatever it fits into whatever your groove is, and that's what's great about it. Now, did you notice, I know I just said this a thousand times, but did you notice that we just played the exact same song um, except just higher up using higher notes, right? Um, now that's the magic of music, okay? It's all totally interchangeable to fit your own voice, right? It's the beauty of art, really. Uh, think about two painters who are trying to paint a picture of the same thing, like, um, uh, betrayal, the emotion of betrayal, okay? So one painter decides to use, uh, lots of dark blues and purples, and he uses oil on a canvas, okay? Now the next guy is going to paint, uh, he's going to portray the exact same thing, the exact same emotion of betrayal, only he's going to paint that picture with, um, he's going to use black and white, uh, ink portrait instead, right? That's exactly what we've just done, um, with, uh, with our music, okay? One person, maybe, uh, decides to paint a song in the key of E using oil on a canvas, and then the next guy decides to paint their song um, in the key of G with uh, black and white ink on a portrait, you know? So it's the exact same thing, right? I personally would suggest uh, using whatever key signature the artist recorded the song in, but... Art is ruthless, and the rules are meant to be broken, as I always say. So, congratulations, folks. You've, um, you've just been let in on the secret key to learning the guts of any musical chord progression that you come across. Uh, it's not so hard once you figure out certain key concepts like um, chord progressions and key signatures and all these sort of things, right? It's, there's really nothing to it. So, now that we've gone through rhythm, we've gone through the individual chords, and we've gone through the chord progressions and key signatures that those individual chords move around, right? And so uh, I think that the only avenue we have left to explore is to actually go and just start picking away at some of these songs. Uh, hopefully as we've been going through these videos, you've picked up one or two of your own favorite songs that you can play through. Um, hopefully you're not having too much trouble with them. I'm going to set up my email account in case anybody's wondering. Um, I'm going to set up my email account to take in as many emails as I can about uh, whatever songs you guys think I should, I should teach. And whatever uh, songs get suggested for me to teach the most, I'm going to start popping them up along with uh, the rest of the songs on my YouTube channel, whenever I find the time anyway. And so hopefully these lessons have been enlightening for you guys. Um, as I said, um, well, I'm going to post one more video uh, on musical aesthetic um, before these videos are out, and then you're, you're done. Congratulations. You have successfully passed Dustin's uh, How to Be a Campfire Rocker preschool. 
But uh, let's not forget that this is just a preschool, remember? So the real fun, the real, uh, when you really start to learn and to master the craft of the chord progression is as soon as you start to uh, go through Google, collect some lyrics and chords from websites such as Chordy, eChords.com, um, UltimateGuitar.com, and um, start collecting lyrics and chords, copy and paste from those websites into your own uh, big document file of um, your own little musical book for you to learn and play through your uh, favorite easy songs and, and you know, uh, your favorite songs for certain people. Uh, that's when it really takes off. Once it, once you can, once you've got the lyrics and chords in front of your face, you know how to play all the chords. Now all you gotta start doing is just playing through them. You know what I mean? It's one thing to have all the theory in your head. It's another thing to extricate that theory into a playable form that people can watch and see and appreciate for themselves. Right? Um, another thing I su I highly suggest is to collect some of your friends together and start actually teaching them how to play guitar. Why not, right? Uh, the more the merrier in this case. And this uh, this musical wave that is just getting ready to hit us, it's it's ready to come. All we got to do is start putting the nuts and bolts together. Um, so uh, nothing teaches the thing is that nothing teaches you rhythm and timing and psychedelic communicate sorry it's that psychedelic psychic communication nothing teaches you timing rhythm and psychic communication between people uh, like jamming does not to mention the bonds you can make with your f good friends and the creativity that you guys can express as a group through jamming. Uh, the world needs more jammers right now, people, more than ever. And the only way that that's going to happen is if we pass the buck along, you know? Start trying some, try, try some patience and start teaching your friends how to play these, you know, little things that you're learning on the guitar. And uh, hopefully, eventually, it'll come down to uh, you, teach, you teach your friend your favorite songs and he will teach you their favorite songs. And then before you know it, you'll be jamming together. It's as simple as that. Um, so, uh, now is the time for us to be learning the guitar, especially if you're young. Uh, they say it's a little bit harder to learn guitar once you've got a house and a mortgage and you're paying bills and all these things, but, you know, you, not, you know, if you are in, are in that situation, you should still be learning the guitar anyway, right? Um, it's never, you know, we've got our whole lives to learn the guitar, but the fact is that if you're in school right now, uh, there's not really a better time for you to be learning, right? If the only thing that you've got to look forward to is a report card, now's probably a pretty good time for you to be learning to play guitar.